Last time we left off with a gruesome scene seemingly taken from a computer restoration horror movie, having discovered yet another fault in our memory section deep inside a potted module. This deserves a long episode and we'll come back to it later. Needless to say, memory repair prospects looked really grim and we wanted to start testing the AGC without it. This is when Max's test monitor became really important and what this episode's about. It starts with us opening the back plane. So Mike, you are opening the AGC because you want to add a wire. Yes, we want to add a, a ground test wire that was present in the flight model AGCs that isn't yet in ours. Mike has uh, reproduced a piece of test equipment that was used, used in the real test development of this AGC but it works with a machine that has a later wiring, so we are, we are updating our machine, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the piece of test equipment in question, it's called the test monitor, and you can see it here, you can see where it plugs right here in the right hand side of the AGC under test. And of course with the miracle of modern electronics, the whole thing now fits in the plug, so that's uh, how the reproduction that Mike has done looks like without the cover. And you have seen it working in previous episodes, and it transformed the AGC in a magnificent blinker light machine. But moreover, and perhaps more importantly, Mike's monitor, if we were to add the wire, is able to provide emulated memory to the AGC. So the goal is that we can run and sorely test the AGC before we have its memory section repaired. Uh, the later flight AGCs that had this wire used to this gate is uh, MAMU is the wire we're adding. Okay. So we're using this one instead so we don't have to change any wiring. We don't have to remove any wraps. This, this wire inhibits erasable memory cycles. Uh, so with it, we can replace erasable memory with the monitor. Right, which is yeah. one of the things, uh, one of the workarounds that we want to have here because you know our erasable memory module is dead at the moment. Yeah, all the way from here to over the test connector. Fortunately, the AGC backplane is entirely wire wrapped and it's quite easy to make modifications. All you need is a special wire and a special tool and you thread the tool over the pin and then you twist it around and it will coil the wire and make an excellent, very high reliability, reliability contact. Yeah. Looks okay. Looks professional enough, I think. There you go. And before we can hook up the monitor, I need also to clean a few of the main connector pins. The, the test connector pins themselves are okay, they were protected by a cover, but the main connector pins they look terrible and I need at least the power pins and uh, I tried vacuuming, that didn't do anything, toothbrush didn't do anything, solvent didn't do anything. So in desperation I made myself a modified dentistry tool and that started to work uh, a lot better. So I don't know what went in there, it's just this, it would be interesting to analyze it. <laughs> it's this gross looking gooey stuff. Mm. I really have to get in there. I just milled this tool this morning. Mm -hmm. I just it's sharpened. Yeah, it's a dental tool that I made much smaller. Uh -huh. I don't want any particles because that would. Here's a big one. Well, a big one. It's big in microscope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I'll get there. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like ten minutes per connector, and then mm -hmm. we have only only 360 pins. So <laughs> as well. And I am making some progress in the connector, so that's the unrestored section. This is all what vacuuming and isopropanol wiping will do, so it, the crud still gets there. But if you get to the restored part here, if you actually go and get the crud out, with a modified dentistry tool, then you can actually get it looking reasonably good. So this is the restore section. Oh 
we retested the power supplies we tested the other modules we added one wire okay big moment and uh, no, quickly we have the antique 1925 powering up the HP powering up the um, AGC uh, being monitored by Max uh, reproduction of the ground test equipment and showing on his computer if everything works so that would be a significant very significant step from last time right mm -hmm. we, we were last time we were just probing inside with a million wires this is now back to its original configuration with the you know, fantastic reproduction hardware that uh, Mike's done and using the Samtech pins you can connect it right yep we have the remanufactured original pins that were the whole Okay, so you're going to get your FPGA powered up. All right. So do I go over and power it up? Yeah. Do, do we do a countdown? <laughs> a prayer. <laughs> okay. okay. So uh, do I go for power up? Go for power up. So we're watching current. It should be yeah. about 1.3. Okay, yeah. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, that looks good. Oh, it runs. <laughs> it runs. Oh, we got a disky display. Look oh, at that. Wow. Look at all those blinking lights. Oh my. We're getting only one hardware alarm, and it's the PIPA alarm because the PIPAs aren't giving us the plus three minus three right? So, is it taking your input? Yes? Uh, let's see. Operator error. I do verb 16, I get a 17. Okay, so we have just some so pins. The injection is okay. Awesome. Or it could be the interface object, right? The channel. Try 17 and see if you get 16. <laughs> nope. Uh, so maybe we have a, 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 a wire. Did we wire it wrong? No smoke out of the AGC. Well, it's hermetically sealed. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's at 1.36 amps, 28 volts. I'm proud of my 1925 from the time. Give it the go ahead. And Jimmy, not sweating bullets too much? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Which makes you more nervous? Sending us in United or having us power it up? <laughs> So, set up an instruction breakpoint. Now you're single-stepping. Single-stepping. You can see how the light just stopped blinking, but they, they work one step at a time. So, so he has, he has just gained, it's the super hacker, he has just gained entire control over the computer. So th this is really 1960s state-of-the-art debugging, right, where you had panel no, like these ones. This this is what you used to uh, debug computer, right? <laughs> and so literally a second ago, we met. We Mike managed to run self test. And it, so it's passing the instruction test? Yep. All of them? All of the instructions, I think. It might not be doing the input-output tests. Okay. So those would be the really interesting ones. So right now we have Aurora 12 running the complete suite of uh, AGC self-tests that MIT wrote. Uh, and so far it has passed everything. It just did a sweep of the simulated erasable memory and didn't find any errors. So right now, the computer is testing itself, basically. Yep. And it hasn't found a single problem yet. What would the number mean on the disk at this point? This is the total number of tests that have been completed. This is the number of erasable tests that have been completed. And this is the number of, I think, fixed memory tests that have been completed. Th this number incrementing means it's been through the complete suite of tests.
Okay, so all memory is good? All of everything is good according to this. Oh, it oh, is all of simulated system. memory, right. because we don't have the real memory right. yet. The test will keep running in a loop forever as long as we have them enabled. Yeah. And the two on the bottom here means that it's passed all of its self-tests twice. So we have a clean bill of health on mm -hmm. all the logic. Yep. Wow. That's something. And maybe some some I.O. problems that we have to uh, to debug, but we have never tested the I.O. Right. But now we have the computing part of a computer is working. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Super. <laughs> So Mike has already figured out why we have a input problem. Should I need gloves? Um, it's because right on the floor there. okay, we don't have a disk key attached, but we have a workaround. We'll make it think we have a disk key attached. And Mike here to help me, which is triple which. checking. It's a pull-up resistor to 28 volts. No, to 20. Yeah, 28. 28 volts for uh, that um, the key simulates reset. the disk key reset. Mm -hmm. So the way the disk key works is okay. Give me the pin. Hot signal okay. when the keys are uh, not. Uh, is, is this is where it goes down through the yes, sequence and exactly. switch will block? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so that one Ooh. resets all the flip input flop flops. And as soon as it's unassuming, okay. this is our this is our disk key. Until we yeah. part of the disk key, and I we need we need to uh, have the connector. I mean, we could have done it with pins on the front if they were clean. But unfortunately, yeah. cleaning nine pins today took me one hour. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> they are not all clean. We just clean the so power ones. So, Mike, let's try number two with the magic wire, and see if your disk key is fixed. Ready? You ready for power, or let's wait until he says he's ready? Uh, give it the beans. Yes, I'm ready. Here we go. Okay, three, two, one, power on. Yeah, okay, so that's power done. Okay, it's working. Good. All right, so now the keystrokes. We want to see these keystrokes. Yes, oh, yes. look at that. Yes, From yes. Salt. <laughs> it worked. Okay. Cool. And, and Mike promised he would fly a P63 on the real hardware. Okay, go, go, go for it, Mike. Right. Fly us to the moon with the real EGC. So I need to change the rope we're running to luminary 99. So you are now loading Apollo 11. Yep. And then try loading the demo. Restart. Proceed. You want you want the cheat sheet again? Or the oh, look at that. We're yeah. So <laughs> we recognize that. We yep. are at one oh two hours. And what what is it? The uh, the the timing in the mission? One two hours, twenty three minutes, twenty one seconds. Yeah. For thirty seven enter okay. Start program sixty three. Uh oh. P program alarm. What did work? What do we get? Verb 5, now 9. So 210. Now, oh, I thought I know what the problem is. <laughs> oh, so so now, now we're connected to the yeah. real hardware, so it wants it wants to send so the lamb. Is that what it is? Program alarm 210. IMU not operating. We'll need a million inputs to make it think it's hooked up to a lamb. Oh, no. We just build a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> or buy one on auction. Oh, yeah. An inflatable one. Real one. <laughs>